sources of errors. Before talking about sources of errors, maybe useful to uh, just state advantages and disadvantages of uh, the inertial navigation system. Uh, it is an autonomous and it does not rely on any external aids or visibility conditions. It can operate in tunnels or underwater as well as anywhere else. It's inherently well suited for integrated navigation, guidance and control of the host vehicle, the, uh, the moving platform. Uh, its uh, IMU measures the derivatives of the variables to be controlled, position, velocity, and attitude. It's immune to jamming uh, or um, uh, interference, and it's uh, inherently stealthy. It, it neither receives nor emits detectable radiation and requires no external antenna that might be detectable by radar. So, in essence, it is an autonomous system. The disadvantage of inertia, uh, though, uh, the uh, mean square navigation errors increase with time. It is costly, uh, acquisition cost, uh, operation cost, and maintenance cost. Uh, of course, that uh, the uh, of course that the cost is being decreasing uh, with the MAM sensors, for example. Size and weight have been shrinking. Power requirements uh, they're also been shrinking with the as the systems uh, are getting uh, smaller. And the heat dissipation is basically proportional uh, to and shrinking with power requirements. Uh, the main source of errors of the uh, inertial navigation system would be uh, noise, so interaction of vehicle inertial motion with instrument noise, uh, misalignments of the instrument and the platform, initial position and velocity errors, as we have seen we need to have uh, initial estimates and also gravitational disturbances in the sense that uh, the uh, the value of uh, g that uh, we can use to subtract from the acceleration would be given by a model the model may not be perfect so if you look in terms of the error model the accelerometer's errors we have long-term bias random noise the scale factor times the specific force vector and non orthogonality crosstalk. Uh, if you look at the rate gyro errors, for example, we have long term bias, random noise, scale factor multiplied by rotation rate vector, non orthogonality crosstalk. So um, <laughs> we can see that uh, uh, they, they share. Uh, common uh, error sources and um, uh, of course that it, uh, it will apply differently depending on the quantity they are measured. Drift is uh, one of the big problems that we have to, uh, to solve through calibration. A very uh, usual way is by using uh, external information such as positions and velocities. Uh, for example, if we have points of known positions along the trajectory, uh, we can apply these known positions uh, to the position that is derived from the uh, inertial and, uh, and uh, correct the drift. Or if we have a different sensor that is given velocity, we can also use that. Uh, external position can think also if we have a GPS working together. Uh, for example, um, there is also a the, the so-called stop and go operation, uh, which can be used uh, if you are doing a terrestrial measurement. Uh, in which case, the vehicle would stop, uh, that indicating zero velocity. So we can do a zero velocity update. Uh, if you have a, a platform 
on an aircraft or uh, on a satellite. Uh, the other, other features have to be taken into consideration. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, we use the, uh, the vertical, the gravity vertical. We, we need to be making the, uh, the um, uh, up or down measurement with respect to the uh, perpendicular to the horizontal plane. And we also have to take into account the uh, rotation of the Earth.